Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is awful. Awfully good! Oh! In all reality, FF7 Rebirth is a complicated game to discuss and even play without some core elements behind it. First and foremost, it's a sequel to 2020's FF7 Remake. It's also a remake of 1997's Final Fantasy VII and part of the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, which is every piece of canon media associated with Final Fantasy VII from 1997. So if you're already confused by that, then just wait, it gets worse. In this video, we are going to review and analyze Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and portions of Remake as a whole, as well as the original Final Fantasy VII as they pertain to Rebirth. So let's assemble the party, leave Midgar, and jump right in to Rebirth. As a note, this will not spoil FF7 Rebirth, and we will be only showing footage from the PlayStation trailers leading up to the release. That being said, we will be spoiling some very minor parts of the original and remake part one, but nothing that will spoil individual plot points. Also, since Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a hefty name to be saying all the time, we will be calling Rebirth Rebirth, Remake Remake, and the original FF7 as the original. That being said, let's get right on to the review. Rebirth picks up right after the party leaves Midgar in Remake, and are heading out in their quest to find and stop Sephiroth, which, as it so happens, opens up a gameplay shift from Remake. Rebirth is an open-world RPG experience, and unfortunately brings with it all the trappings of an uninspired open world with tropes you've seen a hundred times before. Remake, unlike Rebirth, was a largely linear game with small stopping points for some side quests with minimal exploration. It was there to tell a very focused story, and did so very well. Rebirth, in contrast, is very, very open, almost to a fault where it can be difficult to tra traverse these somewhat lifeless, point-of-interest, POI-focused checklist objectives. Your Ubisoft towers have returned and largely are the starting point of any amount of open world exploration. There are also character driven side quests for you to partake in with various amounts of character interaction that contribute to your party's affinity meter. Affinity is kind of like a dating minigame which doesn't seem to always work and can't be easily tracked other than squinting your eyes at your screen and seeing if one circle is more filled than another. It makes you wonder if you need to invest in LASIK surgery. Regardless, overall, I think that's the game's weakest point. Its open world is not inspired or revolutionary at least comparatively to the open world genre in the way that games like Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate were just a few years ago. Rebirth's world is a stale cookie cutter and boring checklist game we have seen in other games hundreds of times before. But Wraith, I hear you say. I thought you said it's awfully good. Is it good or is it bad? Well, that's a mixed bag for me much like the various mini-games the game has to offer. And when I say this game has mini-games, oh boy, does it have mini-games. And you are going to play them. I think, again, without providing plot spoilers, one of my heaviest criticisms with Rebirth as a whole is that the game forces you to play just about every single mini-game it has to offer, all with various degrees of polish and depth. An example of which is the Queen's Blood card game. It's like they had a board meeting and said, oh gee whiz, this game is great. It just needs something else. Any ideas? And someone in the room said, remember Gwent from The Witcher 3? Let's put that in there, but make it fucking mandatory to the story. So everyone who neglects it is forced to suffer to challenging opponents until they win. And everyone cheered and laughed evilly for the casual story enjoyer tears that would be shed. Queen's Blood would be fun if they didn't force you to play it as much as they do, but sadly that isn't the case, as at many points in the story you are painstakingly forced to play the minigame and have to hear some of the most annoying voice lines from characters I've seen. 
Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about these characters and the party dynamic as a whole, again, without going into spoilers. Something done well from the original remake that has definitely been carried over and improved upon is the party dynamic. The characters react and give input on things in the environment and in combat heavily. Some characters are definitely shown more love than others. People will be banging down the door to buy our film rights. Your stunned silence says more than words ever could. I knew you'd be- Please shut up. But for the most part, the game tries and succeeds to show how each character has their own reason to fight and go on this journey. You see more interaction between side characters like Tifa and Aerith's adorable friendship, as well as the growing bromance between Cloud and Barrett, and Red Thirteen's tragic but inspiring story, just chef's kiss. Oh, so good. But ultimately, every character is given the time and care to show what motivates them to be those who fight further. Huh? See what I did there? Huh? Those who fight further? It's a song name in the game, don't worry about it. I'll see myself out. The story is unbelievably epic. Even with the nonsensical, bland, open world stuff, the painstaking mini-game shenanigans that would make the Yakuza developers blush, it is awesome. That being said, there is a glaring problem with the pacing of the story that I think needs to be talked about and is a horrible takeaway from Remake. In a few chapters in Remake, the party would encounter a dungeon and make you play both sides of the characters' perspectives. Team A would go this way, Team B would go this way, right? Which usually were short and non-imposing, and genuinely fun at times. Here, however, it's almost like every single chapter has some reason the party splits up for the sake of it and you have to play as both sets of parties, and it sucks. Sometimes it can work and adds different, cool, unique perspectives on situations and characters at hand, but it starts to become formulaic and definitely feels like padding or filler. And you never want your filler to feel like filler, you know? Although this is a personal gripe I have, and I talked to others who didn't mind it as much as me, so maybe I'm in the minority here, but it definitely felt jarring. After writing the script and rereading parts of it to you, the viewer, yeah, that's you, you might be thinking to yourself, man, it really sounds like this Wraith guy fucking hates this game. Dislike, unsubscribe, thrown into the Sarlacc pit. But honestly, I really like this game, and I think it's one of the most fun games I've played this year. The graphics are gorgeous, and it's some of Square Enix's best work to date. Whoever designed Tifa's model, I'm looking at you, boss. Making the Italian Senate happy, I see. But you can really see the subtle nuances and expressions on faces and insane detail in the environments. It's just so damn good to look at. The menu UI, the look of the combat, and everything else is just perfect. Now, speaking of the combat, the combat is absolutely out of this world, taking the bones of the remakes and improving it and deepening it in such a fun and unique way, while adding the use of the synergy moves where two of your party members team up and unleash some flashy, satisfying, strong, powerful attacks on their foes is just peak gaming. Every character feels very different, yet all feel powerful in their own unique ways. And when you start getting in the flow of it all, with the music pumping, it just feels amazing. Speaking of the music, the music, the music. Mother of God. It's such a wonderful recreation and remix of classic tracks from the original 1997 game with a wealth of new tracks on top of it. There's so much of it and it all hits the mood perfectly. From somber orchestration to upbeat jazzy tracks to rock out with your cock out banger EDM metal tracks, the music slaps and it slaps hard. There really isn't much else I can say about the game without going into spoilers, but I will say the story has a bit of a confusing ending that will leave even the most fanatical FF7 fans scratching their heads. But hey, maybe that's a topic for its own video. Overall, I think that Rebirth is kind of a hidden gem that's buried beneath its own shortcomings and needlessly complex and varied filler. The open world adds nothing to the experience that hasn't been done better in other games. The mini games would be a lot more fun if I didn't get forced to play all of them. 
and all of those blemishes on what could easily be one of the most badass and emotionally charged story, graphics, combat, music combos in gaming I've ever seen. The game is awfully good, but ultimately I think it suffers from bloated side content. It's a great game that has a lot of easily avoidable flaws that I hope gets refined upon the third installment of this remake series. Also, before I go, <laughs> I hate this kid. Chadley is the fucking worst, okay? It is the worst thing in Remake, and he's the worst thing in Rebirth. Every time he opens his mouth, I get a primal sense of gorilla rage that makes me just want to bust this fucking nerd. Stop! <laughs> he's already dead! Seriously, this kid sucks. I want him gone. Anyways, that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Also, tell me what you thought of Rebirth down in the comments down below. Check out our Discord to stay up to date with the community and what we're up to next. Link is down below for that. And if you want to see us live, check out our Twitch channel right here. Yeah, it's also down in the description down below. That's all for me, Wraith of the Nine. Thank you again for watching, and wherever you are, whenever you are, have a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Bye, guys. All right. Uh, Tifa Rule 34.